So we are now live, right? Okay. Uh, okay. Yes, yes. Uh, Dr. Parul, I request you. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Yeah, yeah. No problem. No problem. So I, 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 I have now the pleasure of introducing our next, uh, next lecturer. The next speaker in our webinar series today evening from learning physics with conceptual and problem based approach that is electronics we have had a week of electronics in detail however we thought that how about recapitulating some uh, some numericals of electronics all over again and it's a pleasure for me to introduce dr rajesh kumar from the department of physics lovely professional university Punjab. dr rajesh kumar has been working in this department since 2008, which is in Pagwada, a place in Punjab. He did his MSc and doctoral from Guru Nanak Dev University, Amritsar, Punjab. His research work in developing highly sensitive and selective tin oxide thin film based gas sensors for a highly toxic gas, such as hydrogen sulfide. He has six publications in highly reputed journals, such as Applied Physics Letters, DFIS D, Applied Physics, Vacuum, Nimban, Acta, Cristallo, Graphica B. His main teaching interests include mechanics, electronics, thin film technology, and nanoscience. He's passionate to guide UG and PG students for the preparation of competitive examinations, the national ones, and he's also the center in charge of IAPT NGPE examination. What is NGPE examination? It is National Graduate Physics Examination, which is held all over India by the Association of uh, Physics Teachers called IAPT. And he's in charge of his center for the uh, last three years conducting it successfully. So it's a pleasure for us to have you, Dr. Rajesh, here. And apart from his usual bio note, I would like to tell him, I would like to tell you all, attendees, that Dr. Rajesh has been, people make friends on Facebooks for fun, and we became friends through internet and through a WhatsApp for academics. So Dr. Rajesh, uh, I've known him through uh, the messages that we exchange regarding physics teaching, physics learning, and what all can be done for the UG and the PG students for their understanding of electronics. And uh, he, he, has, he has done a lot of research on the various types of um, electronic material, e-content available for uh, electronics learning on the internet. So with those words, with a very eager and, and a person who is interested in always helping the students. I welcome you, Dr. Rajesh. Please share your screen and deliver your talk. Hello, students. Uh, am I audible and visible to everyone? Yes, sir, am you I, are. Uh, could you okay. make this bigger? I mean, uh, could you make your PDF slightly bigger and uh, there is this right bar showing export pdf create pdf uh, please stop that uh, or this one, yes this way this one i want if i just you can use a view complete view or something okay like okay should i uh, should i use the uh, ppt uh, sir which whatever you like that's up to oh, you only just oh, i wanted okay. it to become it Okay, I use my PPT here, so that will be easier for me. Whatever, sir, that doesn't matter. Students, I hope you have finished uh, filling up the feedback link for thermal physics. Also on the YouTube, please, please take note. It's already there. And uh, so some, so, just as we are finishing a particular subject, but touching upon it again in the following subjects, this is the way you must always study physics. That is when you finish revising a particular subject, then after a week or so, just again, touch it all over again, right? Or uh, touch it for a small time or revise it for a small interval of time. This is the reiterative behavior of human brain and its memory retention. So if you read some books or do some courses on memory retention, they'll always tell you that memory goes exponentially decaying down, right? Uh, Dr. Rajesh, please use the screen show mode. Ma'am, uh, my PPT is uh, visible. Yes, sir. It is visible. Net, jet, no. net, gate and jam, multiple choice. Uh, we have to, uh, mainly we have to do the net, gate and jam, multiple questions. And uh, the, uh, the concept will uh, the concept you have, might have studied in your uh, electronics week, you have to just uh, apply that. 
so i will uh, try to round uh, try to round 10 15 questions here so that you can uh, be able to understand that so mostly in uh, i have seen that in net gain examinations mostly questions on digital electronics as well as some kind of semiconductor physics they come uh, they come there so mostly i have chosen the important questions that are necessary for the uh, for the for these kind of examinations so first question i will do it is this that i chose that the logic circuit shown in the figure is given by so and so so you can see that uh, you can see that there there is a it is an application of xor gates so xor gate you know that uh, uh, the xor gates give the high output uh, when the inputs are different uh, uh, when the ones are odd therefore you have got a uh, two xor gates uh, one has got a input and uh, and a second input is given a, a permanent high therefore uh, similarly we have got one more uh, or gate a xor gate that has uh, one b input and it has got a permanent uh, high input and ultimately you have to this is its explanation that uh, uh, you can give a and b as 00 Zero one one zero and one one. Similarly, a C is the a, a C is output of this. So a, a permanently high, high output I have given as one 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 because it's permanently high. Then a C is the a C is the a output of this a first XOR gate and D is the output of second XOR gate. So it means that. If you compare A and H, you have to compare A and H because A is uh, A, A is the input and H is the input for the first uh, XOR gate. So uh, you can see that this uh, this C you can see that zero and one zero and one will give you one because uh, A, it has got a odd ones. Similarly, a, a second is also zero and one. Still, you will get a one output. Because uh, the uh, ones are odd. Similarly, one 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 will be give a, a zero output because ones are even. Similarly, one and one will also give you a a, a zero output because of the a even ones. Similarly, D is output of the second one. You have to compare Z, this B and H, and this will be correspondingly depending upon the XOR gate. We have one zero one zero also. And ultimately, our uh, output is given by this formula y is equal to c plus d. Say because uh, c plus d because c uh, output of c of this x y gate goes to a or gate. Similarly, the d output of this x y gate goes to the or gate. So this will be equal to c plus d. Uh, c uh, or gate c one plus one is one. One plus zero will be one again. Zero plus one will be one again. So and so. And this is the this is the a, a two stable of a Uh, of a NAND gate. This is a two table of a NAND gate. Therefore, the output of this will be equal to y is equal to a b bar. The y uh, the output will be equal to y uh, y is equal to a b bar. So that is the answer will be a. For uh, for this circuit, the answer will be a. Okay. This is how we get the answer for the circuit. This is now next is that uh, when. Uh, it says that when three uh, zero to three hundred volt a uh, volt a uh, volt meter has an error of a uh, plus minus two percent of full scale deflection, that you have got a, a volt meter uh, that uh, you can measure is between zero to three hundred volts, and you have a error of plus minus two percent a plus side to a plus two percent and a minus side two percent also. So what is the range of the reading of the two voltages? Thirty volt. So you are measuring a uh, 30 volt from that voltmeter so what will be the voltage you you will be measuring so this is how we we find that the 0 to 300 volt has an error of plus minus 2% this means that if you take a plus minus 2% here so ultimately there will be a, a variation of plus minus 6 volt on either side so whatever voltage you measure with that voltmeter you will have a, a A negative six volt and a plus six volt. So uh, your voltage range will lie in the uh, your voltage will range will lie in the range thirty minus six and thirty plus six. 
ultimately that will run from 24 volt to 36 volts. So means that if you may get a 30 volt, a 30 volt volt supply with that voltmeter, your range of voltage that you can measure will be between 24 volt and 36 volts. This is the second vehicle I have chosen from a net getting a net examination. And similarly, this is the third one. Now you have got a, a, a this is based on the triple five timers in a stable mode. You can use a triple five timer in three modes. It can be a stable mode. It can be a monostable mode. It can be bistable mode. Now a stable mode is also called a free running mode that uh, there's no uh, a fixed state. And uh, this is uh, this is a diagram uh, if uh, that you have to find out. You have to find out the frequency as well as the duty cycle from this. Now, uh, you have got a formulas. You have got two formulas. One is for the frequency and one is for the duty cycle. And you have to apply straight away. You can see that. You can see that it's given, everything is given. Uh, the supply voltage is given as 5.5 volt. Then you have got, uh, you are given some resistances. R1 is 2.2 volt and R2 is 4.7 kilo, kilo ohm. And external uh, capacitors given by 0 0.02 micro 0 0.02 to microfarad also. So now uh, there's a there are two formulas you might have studied in your uh, uh, electronics week also when you, you might have studied uh, as a triple five timer. That is the uh, first formula is this: the frequency of uh, oscillations is given from a triple five timer is given by this formula: 1.44 by R1 plus 2 R2 into C A C. You can and this uh, these two formulas that I have I'm showing you you can see from Thomas Freud's book. There's a book by Thomas Freud, a distance fundamentals. From this you, uh, you can find the these formulas. Uh, also a derivation of these formulas can also be found there. Or you can also see the uh, a, a YouTube channel that is called All About Electronics in which all the derivations are there. You can see that. So electron. If you want to study electronics well, you have to. Uh, you must see the uh, YouTube video of all about electronics that contains around 70 80 videos and uh, your uh, electronics will become, will become very strong with that. So ultimately for the frequency is a formula of this 1.44 R1 plus 2 R2 C X A C external. You have just put in the values. R1 is given as 2. Point, here you can see that R1 is given as 2.2 K a kilo ohm. R2 is given as 4.7 kilo ohm. You just uh, Put in this value, this will be 9.4 kilo ohm, and you have to use a capacitor also 0.02 microfarad capacitor is there that you have also is given here. Just put in the values a single a single shot a single formula question is there. So ultimately, when you will find this is a solve it, ultimately your frequency will come out as 5.64 kilohertz, and your duty cycle. What is a duty cycle? A duty cycle decides. Then why, uh, whether the uh, your oscillations that you are getting from the uh, you are getting from a triple five timer are uh, are distorted or they are uh, uh, you have you are going to get a sort of the wave they are symmetrical or not uh, or not symmetrical. If you have a fifty percent duty cycle, this means that whatever you are getting from the uh, from the as a triple timer, a timer will be symmetrical and will have a square wave. And if you get a, a duty cycle more than a, a more or less than a, a say 50 percent, this means that you will get a, get an asymmetric, asymmetrical wave. So the duty cycle can be found by this formula R1 plus R2 over two, uh, R1 plus 2 R2 into 100. You just put in the values or everything is given. Just put in the values and ultimately your duty cycle will be 59.5 percent. This means that the output that you are getting, the waveforms that you will get from the uh, AC triple from this IC triple fiber timer will be a, that will be asymmetrical or unsymmetrical in nature. So means that your uh, answer will be in this case. Answer will be 59.5 percent. That I have uh, already shown you how to find it. So this is how we find th these are the simple questions. You must uh, you must not miss out on these. Uh, if you are getting on a if you are uh, uh, going for a net and gate examinations, if such questions come, you must not admit, uh, miss out on these questions. Then why I have got a one more question on DA converter, which you might have studied. There are there are 
there are many types of converters which is called digital to analog converter it can be analog to digital converters can be can be there so digital to analog converters can be of three types that we that, uh, that is called binary weighted then we have got r to r ladder network and one more type is there similarly we have got uh, adc and log to digital converters are there like a successful uh, successive approximation type and uh, we have got uh, one or two more such kind of dual show method is also there so right now we are going to uh, we have a numerical that says that a four bit da converter produces an output of 4.5 volt for an input voltage input code of 1001 the value of output voltage for an input code of 0011 is given by so and so so uh, this uh, this question is based on the uh, the binary weighted resistor type this question is based on binary weighted resistor types and uh, this is uh, these are called 1001 it has got the first is called mcb msb that's called most significant bit and this is called least significant bit all lsb and output voltage is taken as 4.5 volt how will you find it you have to use this formula the output is given by for a for a, a binary weighted trans binary weighted resistor type the formula is given by this formula v0 is equal to k times 8 b3 plus 4 b2 plus 2 b1 plus v0 but this you can see from melvino's book you can see i, I you can uh, see any book either from melvino morris mano or you can see the book of freud you can uh, get the Get these formulas. That is of uh, I, that is of binary weighted resistor method of DA converter. And just put in these values. B3 is given as because right now we we it is if if you go to this side, this is B3, this B2, this B1, this B0. So B3 is one. B0 is also one. So rest everything are zeros. So just put in these values, and ultimately output you will output is given as 4.5 volt. And ultimately, uh, you will get a constant value of constant from here. That will be a one by two. That is four by four by four point five by nine. It will be one by two. And again, the question says you have to find out the output voltage for an input code of zero zero one one. You have to use the same form formula again. Use the same formula again. Just put in the value of K as one by two. And now. If this uh, uh, this input code is given as zero zero one one, just put in the value here zero zero one one, and ultimately if you solve it, output voltage will come out as one point five volt. Okay, so so the output voltage in this case will come out as one point five volt. It is A's answer. Is A's answer in this case? So see that you, uh, same formula has been used twice. Formula same formula is there, but it has been used twice. So if first, if first for finding the proportionality constant k, and second, uh, uh, just put in the value of k in that, and you have to you have the answer. So this is the question we had. Now, a question, one more question that uh, we have is part. Uh, I will show you a diagram also. An insulation resistance R of an insulated cable. Is measured by connecting in parallel with the capacitor C, a voltmeter and a battery B as shown in the figure. You can see that battery B is there. Then we have got a resistance is there. Then we have a capacitor is there. Then we got a switch is there. Now it says that the voltage across the cable dropped from 150 to 15 volts in 1000 seconds. Means that in the voltage across the cable that was 1000 volts, 150 volts. That went down to a 15 volt in only 1,000 seconds. Then after the switch is closed, okay. After the switch is closed, so when the switch is closed, the voltage that was 150 volts that came down to 15 volt only. So why it happened? Because the capacitor started charging. The the capacitor started charging. Uh, therefore, the voltage supplied by the battery. Drop from ten times in thousand seconds. So now, how will you find it? So you have to find what you have to find. If the capacitance of the cable is five microfarad, 
capacitor of the cable you are giving is 5 microfarad then the insulation resistance is given by so so what is the insulation resistance so now it is the uh, the question, the options given are 10 to the power 9 ohm 10 to the power 8 ohm 7 ohm and 6 ohm now here we will using will be using the formula of charging of a capacitor the two formulas of the are there the growth of a growth a, of a, a charge on a capacitor and a decay of a charge on a capacitor here as the capacitor is charging therefore we shall use the formula of a the formula of a charging of a capacitor that is of this type the voltage across the capacitor at time t is given by v is equal to e1 minus e uh, minus t by rc is rc is called a, a time constant it has units of time and e is the maximum voltage that uh, was there and v is the voltage of a certain time t that was 15 volt just put in the values just put in all these values that is uh, and after 1000 second we just put in r way to find out so by using log by using log and ultimately your answer will be 10 to the power 8 ohms so you are uh, uh, after some time uh, if you solve it then the resistance that of the insulation cable that you will have will be of 10 to the power 8 ohms okay so this is the formula you have to keep in mind that you have to use the formula of charging of a capacitor because if the battery voltage is decreasing this means that capacitor is charging so this is the this is the question i chose for you there from the net gate examinations and next is next is uh, where one more diagram is there if a constant voltage plus v voltage is applied to the input of the following op amp circuit for for time t then the output voltage v a v not will approach you are given a diagram like this you are given this diagram that uh, you have got a you have got a, a op amp you have got a resistor you have got a capacitor ultimately this uh, diagram is of a differentiator op amp as a differentiator so means that if you apply a plus v volt and what will be the output here from the output you can see the how the output is changing towards the a uh, how how the output is changing so the i will use this diagram as now this is the uh, i first i will uh, the options are like this if the output voltage will approach plus v exponentially minus v exponentially plus v linearly and minus v linearly the answer is d the answer will be d here but i will uh, i will tell you how i get d okay so you can see that this is a different this is differentiator a open as a differentiator so you can see that if you apply a voltage if you apply a voltage here then the current will flow the current will flow through the capacitor now these a and b are called virtual short circuit virtual ground points a and b are called virtual ground points because uh, you, you might have studied in in your operational amplifiers that uh, uh, that a uh, if if uh, one end of the op amp is grounded then the second end uh, that acts as a virtual short virtual short does not act as a, as a sink of current current does not flow into virtual short or virtual ground only the current can flow through a outside that so whatever current will be, whatever current will flow through this r1 that will also flow the flow through this uh, c also because no current will flow into the op amp whatever can flow through r that will also flow through a c also so virtual short va will be equal to vb that is because of virtual ground this thing like this so at uh, applying kcl at point node a at node a apply kcl that is uh, the kcl filter uh, current law says that the current that flows into the, the current that flows uh, into a node is equal to sum of current that are coming out of the, out of the node if is i1 is the current flowing into the node then i2 must be same that is same current must flow uh, flow through the capacitor also so ultimately i1 is equal to i2 i can be found out like this so i can be found out like this that is where this is potential difference potential difference for between this point and a point a this is zero v minus zero by r 
is equal to c c is this c is the because this is the this is the current fuel capacitor that is the q is equal to cv just differentiate that that is equal to i will be equal to q uh, dq by dt will be equal to c dq by dt and ultimately voltage will be equal to zero volt here minus v volt here so you will have after solving you have this one dv divided by dt is equal to minus v by rc different integrate both sides integrate both sides you will have to keep in mind that this v this v is a constant because you are applying a constant voltage here plus v volt so you have to keep you, you can keep a keep it out from the a integration ultimately it will be equal to minus v by rc integral of dt and v not will be equal to minus v by rc the, the, it runs from zero to t and now v not is proportional to minus v so we can see that from this that v output voltage is proportional to the minus v volt so therefore output varies linearly with minus v okay so this is uh, uh, answers d here d answer is sh says that the voltage output voltage varies linearly with minus v okay so this is how we say uh, solve these kind of questions so uh, keep in mind that uh, in the uh, in the virtual ground the current does not flow it does not act as a sink of current that's the main thing now a battery another question is that uh, i have chosen for you a battery with a constant emf and internal resistance small r provides power to an external load with load resistance made by, by combining the resistance r rl and 2 rl in parallel for what value of rl will the power delivered to the load will be maximum now this is the diagram i have this is the diagram i have that is uh, a and uh, emf is there you have got a small resistance r that is the internal resistance of this a uh, uh, this is our uh, input resistance and these are the output resistance is a parallel combination of two resistances one is rl second is called 2 rl now it says that you have to find the maximum transfer what for what value of f the power delivered will be maximum now you have to use if there is a theorem there are four theorems are there what you have to use a theorem known as maximum power transfer theorem here maximum power transfer theorem says that if the maximum trans the maximum power will be delivered from the source to the load if the impedances or the resistances of of the two or in, input and output are same if the input resistance if the input and the output resistances or the impedances are same that the maximum power will be transferred from the load to the a source uh, from source to the load so in this case we have we can see that this is a diagram the input the input resistance is taken as the the, the condition is internal resistance should be equal to external resistance internal resistance is this r small r small r is this and this is the external resistance external resistance is nothing but a parallel combination of rl and 2 rl just put in these values here and you can uh, you, have, you have to use uh, parallel resistances that is 1 over r is equal to 1 over r1 plus 1 over r2 so ultimately with the equivalent resistance is given by this formula so if they are same r is equal to rl into 2 rl over r1 plus 2 uh, 2 r plus 2 rl they as they as rl and 2 rl set in parallel if you solve it so r will come out as 2 by 3 rl and rl will come out as 3 by 2 r which is the d answer will be d here that is the load resistance the maximum power will be transferred to the load from the source only if this condition is satisfied that the rl and the output should be equal to 1 by 5 times or uh, uh, 3 by 2 times to the a uh, to the r so this is how we uh, solve this question so these are the applications of whatever you have read in your uh, uh, electric electronics we hope you will understand that and that will also recapitulate all your uh, concepts so this a uh, important thing is that is called a, a fourier transforms it, that is you know that the, the if fx is a, a product function of ax with a period of 2 pi in the interval minus pi to pi 
f x is given by student so f x is equal to zero a uh, zero when uh, f x lies x lies between minus pi to zero and say its value sine x when it turns from zero to pi so in the expansion of f x as a fourier series of uh, sine x and cos x functions the uh, coefficient of cos 2x ultimately fourier series uh, a fourier series gives you the uh, the uh, uh, there are uh, uh, Oscillations are there. They, uh, therefore, the Fourier series given by this formula, that is, function is given by so and so. The Fourier series is f x is equal to a a naught plus uh, q naught is the constant value. Sigma of a n x cos n x plus uh, b n x sin x. These are the these are coefficients. These are coefficients of uh, uh, cos x. These are the coefficients of sin x. A n and b n. Now, coefficient of cos two x. We have to find the cos two. Coefficient of cos 2x in this case, that is uh, that is given by a is equal to 2. Just put in the value of a as 2, 1 by pi minus pi to pi, f x cos 2x, because we have to use a n as 2, cos 2x is there. So ultimately, after that, what we will do? Just to put in the values minus pi to 0 pi uh, 0 to pi. This factor will become 0 because you are you are given that from minus pi to 0, because the the, uh, the value of f x is 0. Ultimately, the one by pi is with pi sine x cos two x. Then uh, you can just uh, multiply two, two and divide by two, and ultimately the, you have got sine a plus d a plus b. You have to use a formula. The identity is there sine a plus b minus a sine a sine a minus b. So you have to open a open it up with the identity, and ultimately after solving it uh, and uh, solving the integral. You will have uh, answer as minus of two by three pi. That is the uh, that is the answer we have. That is d in this case. Uh, answer is d here. Is minus of two three two by three pi is the answer in this case. This is how we find it. This is this is how we should solve the Fourier series. Now uh, you can also see a circuit. One more. What is the voltage at the output of the following uh, operation amplifier circuit? See the diagram. You have a diagram there. The input resistance of the first op amp is going to be around one ohm. So the and options are given as one volt, one millivolt, one microvolt, and one nanovolt. So this is the diagram you are given. This I think from a, a, a gate examination is there. So you can see that you can see that that uh, there are two op amps are there. One op amp is this. One op amp is this. You have to deal both op amps differently. Separately, the output of this op amp will go into the will be the input for this op amp. The output of this first op amp first stage will be the input for this second stage. And also keep in my mind that that uh, in this uh, in the first op amp, the input is connected to the uh, inverting terminal, whereas in the second op amp, the input is connected to the in a non inverting terminal so in this case you will for use the formula v not is equal to minus rf over r into vi in the second case you have to use the formula v out is equal to 1 plus rf over r into vi so so you have to keep in mind whether inputs are connected to the negative or the positive terminals now it is also it also says that the input resistance of the first op amp is be around 1 ohm only so you can say just uh, yeah, first. Uh, this is the formula we have. I, I have used the formula with output of the first op amp. This will be equal to a uh, minus of v naught. Uh, v naught will be equal to minus RF over RI into VI. RF is given as RF is the feedback resistance given as 10 kilo ohms, and uh, the input voltage. Uh, the input voltage is given as one nano volt. This should be nano volt, not in nano ampere. So nano volt is there, and ultimately R A the the R A is given as one ohm only, and you just uh, multiply that. Ultimately, your output voltage will come out as minus of minus of ten to one minus five volt, and that will be the input for the second stage. This minus of ten to one minus five volt that will be the input for the second stage. Now, if V out, V out for the second stage is because is so and so because I have used the formula, 
वन प्लस आर एफ ओवर आर आई इंटू ए इंटू वी आई सो नाउ जस्ट पुटिंग दिज वैल्यूज बिकॉज यू कैन सी दैट इन द सेकेंड स्टेज आर एफ इज नाइनटी नाइन किलोम्स आर एफ इज गिवन एज आर एफ इज गिवन नाइनटी नाइन किलोम्स आर इज गिवन एज वन किलो ओम एंड just uh, input voltage is given at as per minus 5 volts now this is connected to the uh, positive terminal so ultimately uh, if you solve it and ultimately your answer will be minus uh, if you solve all these things your answer will come uh, uh, out as 1 millivolt and negative sign will be negative sign will be uh, absorbed somewhere so ultimately the the answer for this will be b that is equal to 1 millivolt the answer for this question is 1 millivolt only you have to keep in mind that we are the inputs are connected when you are going to use an op amp just keep in mind we are your inputs are connected either in the uh, inverting terminal or in the non inverting terminal so say according to that you, you according to that you have to use the formula okay so i uh, i have seen that mostly digital electronics as well as op amp questions are a, a come a, a penalty a, in a plenty in the net gate examinations okay so you have to keep uh, these things on everything is a uh, everything is important but uh, uh, these two three things are very important uh, with a view of uh, net gate examinations as well as jam also then uh, it's very simple one that uh, if it's a it's a serial in serial out that you have to uh, you can also go for a microprocessor there's a uh, in a microprocessor you might have studied 8085 or 8086 microprocessors or some other microprocessors are, are also there so it says that when an 8 bit serial in and serial out is used for 24 microsecond time delay the clock frequency must be because a, a, a digital all digital things run with clocks the clocks are used to increment the clocks are used to increment the uh, the binary numbers so it, it means that a bit if you have a 8 bit serial in serial out and it causes a 24 microsecond time delay so if uh, this means that uh, what is the clock frequency it is 333 kilohertz 111 kilohertz 222 kilohertz or 234 kilohertz so ultimately if you have got for 8 bits it is 24 microseconds for 1 bit it is 3 microseconds because it is just 24 by 8 3 microseconds and ultimately a clock frequency is nothing but the ratio of the uh, the ratio of the reciprocal of this uh, a, a time delay that is 1 by 1 by 3 microseconds and ultimately it will come out as 333 kilohertz if you solve it the answer in this case will be a that is called 333 kilohertz okay so this is how we solve the uh, questions of microprocessors maybe some other questions can also be there but uh, uh, mostly these kind of uh, clock frequency questions uh, i have seen now this is important thing that is jfet now thing is that a uh, determined vid and vgs for the jfet with a voltage divider bias in the given uh, so and so given that for this particular jfet the internal parameter values are such as uh, drain voltage is given by 7 volt so this is a jfet in which we have used the uh, A voltage divider network for uh, biasing. This is a voltage divider network. This is a voltage divider network in uh, from which we can find the value of uh, the output voltage. If you are going to use a, a voltage divider network, the its uh, its uh, output will is given by R two over R one plus R two into V A V input. Just when are you are going to use voltage divider network? Just keep in mind. that the resistance that is uh, connected to the ground is always kept on the in the numerator the resistance that is connected to the ground is always kept in the numerator and ultimately it is r2 over r1 plus r2 into vin so ultimately now this is uh, we have to find the value of id and vgs id can be easily found from this uh, from this because uh, if uh, what is the current flowing this uh, Flowing through this resistance, R D, that is called a I D is equal to V D D minus V D over R D. Potential drop, a potential drop across this resistance, divided by the resistance is it will give you the I D straight away. 
So this is how we find it. I is given by this formula. I is equal to V D D U minus V D over R D. You can uh, you may, you may skip that. Skip the log again. I is equal to 12 volt. This is this we are given. 12 volt is V D D given, and uh, V D is given. There's then a this voltage is given as a 7 volt. You are already given that. R D is given as 3.3 kilo ohm. Just put in these values. Ultimately, answer will be the drain current will come out as 1.52 kilo uh, uh, 52 milli amperes. Now there is a, a small mistake in this question that this RS should be this RS should be 2.2 kilo ohms. This, uh, this is not mega ohms. This is in kilo ohms. So ultimately the gauge a uh, then we have got VGS. How will you find VGS? This is gate. This is gate. This is this is gate. This is source. VGS is given by nothing but the difference between VG and VA, VS. The voltage that will appear here and voltage that will appear here, the difference between these two voltages will give you VGS, okay? And uh, the VS is, uh, the VS that the is source voltage is very easy to find. That is VD, uh, VS equal to RDRS. And uh, ID, ID you have already found that 1.52 kilo uh, milliamperes. And RS is uh, given as 2.2 kilo, I told you that is, it is in kilo ohms, not in mega ohms. Just put in these values, and ultimately you will have 3.3 volt, 3 volt, 3.3 volt, volt volts, and VG. VG. Doctor Rajesh. Uh, yes, yes. Uh, Doctor Rajesh, the the material of the numerical is very small in size. I mean, uh, is it okay, students, or should he uh, magnify it by going to the not screen show mode? Because uh, it's. Can you please answer on chat box? Is the numerical clearly visible and the solution clearly visible to you? Uh, it's okay. So uh, Gauri says okay. It's okay. Yeah, we can zoom. Uh, yeah it's a, please go ahead. People yeah, so that, understanding or, uh, or I am fast. Uh, is it is the pace slow or is it fast or is it okay? Write down on the chat box. So okay, okay. Yeah, please go ahead. Please go okay. ahead, Dr. Rajesh. Okay, okay. So now, thing is that that we have found that uh, Vs is as 3.34 volt. Now, v, uh, important thing is how to find the value of Vg here. This is, uh, Vg is a voltage present at this uh, gate. That can be found with the help of uh, voltage divider rule. That is given by R, R2, R2 or R1. R2 over R1 plus R2 into, VD, into VDD. Just keep in mind, when I'm going to use the uh, voltage divider rule again, the, the resistance that is connected to the ground is, is always kept in the numerator. So this will be come out as a R2 is given as one mega ohm and R1 plus R2 will come out as 7.8 mega ohm. And ultimately VDD is given as 12 volt and it is 1.5 volt. 1.54 volt and ultimate difference vgs is a difference between vg and vs that is 3.3 a 1.54 and 3.34 volts and ultimately it will come out as 1.8 volt so this is the situation we have uh, we have it is minus of 1.52 milliampere and minus of 1.8 1.8 volt c will be the answer in this case the answer in this case will be will come out as c 1.52 ampere and minus of 1.8 volts and uh, one more question I am I am going to show you. This is also based on uh, op amps, but uh, uh, it got a thermistor. Thermistor is that uh, a thermistor is that uh, a thing whose resistance, a species whose resistance falls with increasing temperature, and they are mostly using using color televisions. That uh, if you increase the temperature, the resistance of the thermistor falls. It says that in circuit given below, I will show you a circuit. The therm a thermistor has a resistance of three kilo ohms at 25 degrees centigrade. Its resistance decreases by 150 ohm per degree a per degree a centigrade bar heating as you heat it. Therefore, it's uh, with, with every increase one degree rise in temperature, its resistance falls by 150 ohms. The output voltage of the circuit at 30 degrees centigrade is given by so and so. So this is a this is the diagram I have shown you. This is thermistor. This is a diagram of thermistor, symbol of thermistor. 
this amp of thermistor is there, you are having an op-amp. Input voltage is minus one volt. Then, th then this is resistance is one kilo ohm. Output voltage is so and so. And you have to find, these are the options. Minus 3.7 volt, minus 2.25 volt, 2.25, 3.75 volt. So first is that for at 25 degrees centigrade, we have given resistance of three kilo ohms. This is we are already given. And we, we are already given that for every one degree rise in temperature, the resistance falls by 150 ohms. So this means that if you rise the temperature by five degrees, this means that you go from 25 to 30, then the resistance will fall as seven, it will be fall as five into 150 as 750 ohms. The resistance will fall by 150 ohms and at 30 degree rising temperature it was 3 kilo ohms that is 3000 ohms minus 750 ohms so at 30 degrees centigrade it will be a resistance will be 2.25 kilo ohms at uh, 25 will be 3 kilo ohms whereas uh, whereas at 30 degrees centigrade it will be 2.25 kilo ohms and after that you can you can uh, use two methods to solve this question, uh, either you can use the, uh, the method of uh, a virtual ground, or you can use, use also the method of uh, a straight away. V out is equal to minus RF over RI into VI, that's all. So you can use any of these two methods in, in this case. The answer will be same in, the, in, this table, in these two cases. So applying, in a, applying a, at node, you can see that, a, at node A, so this is node A, this node A, which is a virtual ground point, is a minus one volt minus zero over one kilo ohm is equal to zero minus, zero minus output divided by, this will be a V naught minus zero over 2.25 uh, kilo ohms, if is equal to zero, we just have to just uh, uh, solve it and ultimately output will come as 2.25 volts. So this is, and same thing can also be found out with the a V naught is equal to minus, uh, v, minus RF over RI into VI. That is, if RF is RF is 2.25 kilo ohms and input is uh, 1 kilo ohm divided by that, 2.25, ultimately uh, input voltage is minus 1, minus 1, minus 1 will be absorbed and ultimately the output voltage will come out as 2.25 volts. You can use any method out of, the, out of these two. So answer in this case will be C, there's 2.25 volts. And uh, this is a very simple one that is uh, you must, I think uh, uh, you must be knowing that which of one of the following is not a, a correct statement about semiconductors. The electrons and holes have different mobilities in, uh, in a semiconductor. So they can, uh, that's okay. They can have the different mobilities. In n type semiconductor, the Fermi level lies closer to the correction band edge. That is also uh, okay. That is the uh, Fermi level also lies near the uh, correction band edge. Silicon is a direct band semiconductor. No, it's a indirect band semiconductor. A silicon is an indirect band semiconductor. A semiconductor in which the, if there is a change in momentum. There is a change in momentum as you go from the correction band to the valence band to the correction band. There is a change in momentum that is called indirect band gap semiconductor, whereas the semiconductor in which there's no momentum change of the electrons as they go from uh, the valence to the band, that's correct direct band gap semiconductor. But there's a, in this, in, in case of silicon, there's a change in the, sem, the momentum. So therefore, silicon is a direct, indirect band gap semiconductor. And also the last one is also true because diamond has a silicon-like structure. So in this case, answer will be C here. There's a, a silicon is an indirect band gap semiconductor, and uh, you can also you can uh, see this. This is we are we are having in uh, your 10 plus two. Uh, in your 10 plus two, you have uh, done a chapter on uh, AC circuits, AC theory. That is a, 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 where you had uh, inductor, capacitor, and resistor. You applied some um, a input voltage to that. So this is based on that. Where it, it, it says that a sinusoidal voltage V naught sin omega t is applied across a series combination of resistor and an inductor. Yeah, I will show you a diagram. A inductor 
the amplitude of the current in the circuit is given by so and so we have to find out the amplitude of the current in the circuit that is uh, you have got if you have got a resistor and an inductor you, uh, then impedance will come into picture the reactance will come whenever uh, whenever a inductor capacitor comes with resistance then the impedance comes in, comes there the so impedance of the circuit will be equal to x x l will be equal to r plus j omega l that is x l will be equal to j a r plus j omega l and ultimately if you take its mode then uh, it will be under root of because it's a, com a complex quantity impedance is a complex quantity you must have studied in your 10 plus 2 also or, or in your electronics week also so the magnitude of this actual is given by this formula under root of r scale plus omega scale l square and the maximum value of the peak value of current is given by the peak voltage divided by the the uh, inductive reactance and that will be equal to v naught by under root of r square plus omega square l square that is equal to a answer will be v v, v, v naught by r square plus l square omega square under root and uh, I think this is the last one that uh, I have started, uh, got from gate 2011 examination that uh, you have to use yeah, the following Boolean expression can be simplified too. So you can simplify that with the help of Boolean expressions that we have got uh, 12 Boolean expressions in your uh, digital electronics. You have to use those and you can simplify that. And ultimately, uh, if for this, I may have to use my uh, a pen tablet also so that uh, I can solve it. Can I should I solve it now? Should I solve it or uh, it's okay? Uh, that is a uh, answer is okay in this case. In this case, the the answer will be uh, you, uh, you can say. You can solve it also. As we see in this case, that is A B bar C bar plus A bar D. But you can say we have to solve it with the help of uh, Boolean expressions. Uh, I can solve it if you uh, if you want. Sir, students are saying they will uh, solve by yourself. Uh, they, they will solve. solve it or... They will solve. Should I solve? No, sir. They will oh. solve. Oh, they will solve by themselves. Ah, themselves, yes, sir. Okay, okay, very good. So these are the these are some of the questions I I chose for the uh, for this lecture. So it is uh, okay from now from my side. Anyone, if anyone is facing any problem or someone wants to ask something, he or she can tell me. Now, if you have a doubt in in any question, I will run the slide uh, again. If you have a any doubt in any slide, you can tell me. If anyone has a doubt, you can tell me now. Sir, students are asking for solution of uh, question uh, 15. 15, 15. Uh, okay, uh, I was telling that I can solve that, but uh, students were saying that they can solve it by themselves. Should I solve it? This is question number 15. Should I solve it? They are asking for answer only, sir. Answer. Okay. Answer, answer. I, the answer in this case is C. A, A, B bar, C bar plus A bar D. C is answer.
the the answer will be c in this case students you have any further doubt related to question 15 then write in the chat box if you okay. if you want i can solve it now if you want i can solve it now please write in the chat box no sir they don't want solution only answer uh, they want uh, answer is c answer is c okay sir please continue so a uh, it's a uh, enough from me and uh, if uh, i'm asking uh, if anyone has a doubt uh, he or she can tell me i have prepared for one hour Fifteen questions I have I have done. If you, if you have if if still as someone has a doubt or concept is not clear, you can tell me. Students, if you have any doubts, any query, you can ask in the chat box. No sir, no doubts. They have. Okay. So now should we? Uh... So there are no doubts from the students. So we would like to thank the speaker for uh, such a wonderful lecture, and uh, we shared a lot of questions and answers. So that is very uh, that is going to be beneficial for the students. participants do fill the attendance link for for electronics it has been shared in the chat box so sir thanks a lot so uh, you have discussed uh, quite an important uh, concept of electronics and the related numericals and um, you have just uh, given the outline still, of uh, still uh, if any if any student has any doubt he or she can uh, contact dr punita and she can uh, tell me 
Sure, sir. Sure, sir. We will uh, pass this information to the students, and if they are having any doubts, they will definitely uh, uh, share with Dr. Kunita, and she will uh, forward those doubts to you. Can I leave, leave now? Yes, sir. I think uh, students have already started leaving and they have filled the attendance form. So we can, uh, we will stop the link after 10 minutes. So you have okay. 10 minutes uh, participants to fill in, in the attendance form. Okay, okay, okay. And uh, if host want, yes, of course, host can uh, end the meeting. Any session, ma'am? Can you speak a little loudly? I am saying, sir, that uh, you have already discussed a uh, lot of questions, so we can stop here and we can end the meeting. Okay, 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 okay. Yes. Thank you. Thanks a lot, sir. Okay, ma'am. Okay, ma'am. Dr. Manji, please Hello? share our uh, schedule. Hello. Okay. Am I audible? Yes, ma'am. You are audible. Acha, okay. So, uh, the attendance link for the, not attendance, is the feedback link for the students for electronics is already there on the chat box. And Dr. Rajesh, I must thank you for uh, the nice lecture that you gave with so many numerical problems. Uh, and I'm sure these numerical problems have benefited a lot because uh, even after we had so many lectures on electronics, it's always good to have a revision of the numericals all over again because as we all know, numericals are endless. So I'm really thankful to you for uh, taking out your time to give this talk with so many numericals of net, gate, test and so on. And, and I've told the uh, students that we shall be passing them on, uh, passing on all the lists of the uh, list of Sir Dr. Rajesh has prepared a ranking of the YouTube and internet material available for electronics uh, for the students and for their preparation. And if uh, Dr. Rajesh uh, shares them with me, I shall be sharing them with the students. Isn't it, sir? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. So your, your, uh, your great labor and your great work and efforts would be benefiting a lot of students. So we will be sharing lists of internet material, YouTube videos available on electronics according to our ranking. So if for a particular subject, which particular YouTube or which particular uh, video or uh, information on the, available on the internet will benefit the students. And uh, this lecture of yours is also available for them to refer to again and again. Thank you so much, Dr. Rajesh, for the Thank talk. You. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you so much. I'm sure we'll have more such associations in the future over Thank one you. topic or the other. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you so much. So students, please fill up the uh, feedback link. And uh, tomorrow we shall have one uh, lecture of Dr. Savita Sharma, followed by electromagnetic theory by Dr. Saurav Sur from the Department of Physics and Astrophysics. Thank you so much. Enjoy yourself. Thank you, Dr. Rajesh, once over again. Can I leave now? Yes, yes, yes. Now okay, we'll okay, be we'll be ending the meeting now. Yeah, thank you so okay, much. Okay, okay, ma'am. Thank you, thank you. Yes. Dr. Parul, Dr. Mansi. Yes, ma'am. Yeah. So uh, keep the link on for the next uh, eight minutes or so, so that the students can fill it properly, right? Yes. And uh, please stop the live recording on the.